Broski Trucking uh-huh. Review Channel. Yeah, you sent uh you sent a message through my through my uh through my messenger and I'm going like wait a minute, who's this guy? Who, who is this? Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, wait a minute, which way did I talk to you? Yeah, I had to go back and look and see which one. No, we was we was talking through each other. We was talking to each other through um Instagram. And then uh and, yeah. and then I guess you must have you must have found me on uh Facebook and uh and then we started talking through uh mess I mean through uh through Facebook and I was like I'm over here like who, who is this guy? Who is this guy? I'm like, and then you see, I get confused with Messenger and Instagram, you know? I, There's so much alike. Listen, listen here, we we both do, man. We 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 old schools. I mean, you know, this this right here is is too much for me. I I'm thinking like my son do Twitter and I I I can't do Twitter for the life of me, man. I really can't. I do it, but I don't know why it's a useless dead venue if you're not a president. <laughs> and my or a superstar. That's what my son said. My son said the exact same thing. He said that uh that if you if you're not a celebrity, it's not good for you. Right. All right. All right. So do you get me on uh right, but, but hey man, you got you got you gotta get over there on that other one. What's what's that what's that what that huh? TikTok, TikTok. Oh, yeah. uh, no, nah, I'm not messing with TikTok, man. I, I'm I'm cool on TikTok. That kind of remind me of Vine. It's like it's like Vine, ain't it? TikTok. Uh, I don't know. I've got a Vine account, but I've I've never used it really. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. It's kind of it, it's just like little 15 seconds to a minute clips of stupid stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, truck and review. But it's, it's uh, good for brand. Okay. Hey, do do you have? All right, let me ask you this: Do you have me on the phone, or do you have me on your headset? The phone. All I right. You on on a on a the you know my speakerphone. Oh, you got me on speakerphone. No wonder I'm hearing. No wonder I'm hearing too much feedback. Okay, okay, that's that's yeah. fine. We're going. We're going to change over to the headset. Uh. Well, I'm not sure because every time somebody is on a headset or on the speakerphone part, it's all it's like it's like it's a little bit of feedback on my part. So if you like put me like directly on the phone, but if you have somebody there that want to chime in, then that's cool. Keep it, you know, keep it on the speaker. Yeah, well, she's an integral part of Trucking Review Channel, and I'm just smart mouth. You are the smart mouth. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like when you got me on, like, if it's on the speaker, it sounds mudded out. But I mean, if you got me on the phone, phone, and she want to chime in, you can give it to her. That ain't no problem. I, hey, I, I'm I'm open to everybody. <laughs> I just want the I just want okay, the okay. I, I I just want the sound to be right. That's all. How, all right, I switched it over to just the phone phone. Okay, see, there you go. It sounds a lot better. How how am I coming into you? Oh, you're good. All right, great, great, great. All right, we about to go ahead and get this party started. What's going on, guys? Lockout men here in the truck on the 30 for another podcast interview for you guys today. And today, I don't know where these guys been, but I've been following them for quite a while. Let me go ahead and bring, oops, wrong button. I always had to hit the wrong damn button. But let me go ahead and uh bring bring up their channel right quick. Now y'all are gonna have to bear with me because the internet is always slow. But this is their channel right here. And this is who I have on. Yeah, y'all see the name? Y'all see the name, right? Y'all see the name? Let's welcome Trucking Review Channel. Uh Chris and his wife. What's your wife's name? Tammy. Chris and Tammy Yoder Smith. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? Thank you very much for uh, for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Oh, sure. Anytime. We we always try to spread the love. All right. I seen uh, I seen you guys. Well, what both of y'all? But I I seen um I seen what made me came to your channel the first time. Uh, you did a video 
on the the truth about the driver cam. And I yeah. that that video right there was the one that actually brought me to your channel because you was you was uh explaining how everybody how everybody, you know, all these myths about uh about the driver cam. You know how all these um how all these uh, recruiters, they'll tell you that the driver cam is only, you know, only goes off in the event, uh, heartbreaking, um, uh, uh, swerving and stuff like that. And the camera don't don't run no any other time. But I've been saying this for the longest that the driver cam is always recording. And I don't understand why people why you know why the new jacks always come into the game and the first thing they come out they might well it only goes off in the event but don't you realize in order for it to go off in the event it has to record am i right yes it has to get uh 10 minutes before and after uh an event or you miss sequence of events right so by by it's doing so it's, re it's recording and it backdates it for, for the saving process though so it's recording at all times. At all times, and that's and by me coming across your coming across this video, man, I am so thankful that you that you came out with this video to to, to knock some of the myths of of that driver cam, and that really was the one that brought me over to your channel, man. Um, in that video, uh, can you go over some key points in that video? I think you you are are you still an owner operator or or was it company? Yeah. When was was you a company driver when when you uh, looked into that camera, or was you was you owner operator looking into that camera? Actually, when I looked into that camera, I was I was least driving for a company to to do a specific run, and I had twelve other trucks running under my numbers at that time. Okay. But the company I was running with, their trucks that you leased had the the Litex camera system mm -hmm. and they, they they sold me the same myth about how it worked mm -hmm. so i believed them but when they called me wanting to know strange things like why are you, your truck parked in the woods and stuff because i live in the woods mm -hmm. and i was at home for thanksgiving mm -hmm. i was like well why how would they know what and they said we can watch anything we want at any time so i started to do some investigating and hanging out in the office in the safety department. Mm -hmm. And I was watching the girls watch videos that were private videos that, that they shouldn't have been watching because the trucks were parked. Right. And then I, I thought, well, I got to find out more about this. So I called Blytex company and I presented them because I had, I had a fleet, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I might be interested in purchasing your services. And initially they told me this is a regular sales pitch. But then I got on the phone with management, and they told me the truth that, yes, it records 24-7. It's not being monitored 24-7, that it's just being recorded and saved in case of, of an event. But that the safety department of your company does have a login that can, they can watch it at any time. So our safety department at that particular company had, you know, designating authority. She had spread that that login information mm -hmm. to all of the ladies in the safety department and they was using it using it as an enjoyment tool wow at driver's expenses so so like i so i guess i was right all along then that whoever whoever has that key can automatically get into the system and and watch the driver and we're in real time 100%. Think of the abuses that can occur with that. I mean, you could be at home having a party and everybody watching driver cams, right? Mm -hmm. Or any kind of weird thing. Or you could live stream other people's driver cams through a third party app. Wow. That's now that is crazy. Now, these driver cams have gotten a lot of a lot of drivers uh, in trouble and not just, you know, not just. um you know, not just for company's sake. Like, for example, if you was to drop your phone on the on the floor or something like that, and you go to pick it up and to put it back on the on the on the mount, you get you 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 would get in trouble for that. 
without even what yeah. you know you'll get in trouble for that it's it's you're not supposed to have your phone while you're while you're driving but you're fr- like you're technically breaking law right right technically right. but it was done not, without even thinking it was just a an unconscious act exactly exactly so i am thankful that you came along and and to uh to debunk all of that right here if you guys want to check out that video definitely go to uh trucking review channel the name of that video is the truth about driver cams that's 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 what's up i am glad that uh that that you came and uh debunked that all right chris man go ahead and uh let my listeners know who you are and where you come from um i'm from kentucky i've been driving for 29 years Uh, i got out of the military and i bought a truck uh just learned learned about through trial and error. My girl, she's been driving for eleven years now with me. Um, we we haul jet engines. We got a ARI super sleeper, uh, and that's our life. We you know we have our dogs. We carry our motorcycles around, and we, in, we adventure truck. That's exactly what we do. We adventure truck. All right. So you so you more of a so you got into was you was y'all was y'all married? Did y'all both? Uh, come into the game together or did y'all come into the game separate did you train your wife did you what was what was the process of you getting into the in, into the truck after the military i'm assuming you you learn how to drive trucks in the military yeah i learned how to drive trucks in the military but it was a whole different they were they, they wasn't like our trucks on here out here on the road mm-hmm. military trucks are a lot more they're, they're mostly automatic not all of them but most of them are automatic. Um, and and I, no, I, she had been trained a little bit in England, but she ha- they hadn't finished her training. Her dad was a truck driver, so she she knew about trucking and and how to handle herself. She was very confident when I finished her training. Um, and and eventually, it was about several years later, we ended up teaming together. I hired her. And it was just like a friend thing, right? And then we eventually, over time, became more than friends. Now let me let me let me ask you this right here. Let me ask you this right here, brother man, because of uh, because of the controversy that was going on over at uh, over at Prime Inc. with one of their trainers. You guys was friends. Mm-hmm. You guys was already friends before y'all came together to train with each other, right? No, I didn't. I didn't know her initially. Okay. No, I just, I just finished her training, and and she went and drove her own truck. But you know, as truck drivers, we're always on the phone with our old students and stuff, talking. Mm-hmm. She was married at the time, okay. but uh, later on, uh, her husband and her got a divorce, and then me and her started talking in a different manner. Okay. See, that's what's up. You didn't let you didn't let none of that stuff interfere with your money you made sure that she got the knowledge of driving the trucks and you made sure that you was on point while training her it wasn't no wasn't no hanky panky or nothing like that going on until after she got her license right oh right i broke my back in 98 Mm -hmm. and i had to stop driving for a couple of years Mm -hmm. and uh, when i came back out i couldn't i couldn't really sit for 10 hours and you know day just you know 10 or 11 hours just driving right right so i start i went to a company with my truck and i started training there and after training for a little while um they, you know they gave me a, a female to train and i didn't really want to train a female because i was scared of the whole what could happen yes and but i did because i was like they deserve to be able to be taught in a correct manner mm-hmm. just like anyone else without any kind of sexual harassment or anything exactly and i'm you know i'm i wasn't a young guy so i throw you know myself and um so actually i ended up training mostly women because i got you know really good reviews from the review process okay okay now what company now what company you was driving for at the time to do all this training uh, at that time, I had I, after I broke my back, I went back to CRST. Before that, I was running my own authority. Okay, now you now CRST. Now let's let's uh, back up a little bit because um, your bio, you say you got twenty nine years in as an owner operator. Did you jump into did you mm-hmm. did you jump into owner operations 
after I mean right right out the gate or did you take a little time to do some research about it and then you jumped into it? I didn't research anything. I got out of the army. I tried to find a job for like six months and I couldn't find anything that paid. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not enough to feed my kids and, you know, to, to, to my, what I wanted to provide for them. So my uncle was a truck driver my whole life. And I used to go with him when I was a little kid, you know, back in the old wild trucking days. Mm -hmm. So I knew that you could make money. That's all I knew. I knew you could make money. Talk to him. He was like, just do it, bro. And, uh, I, I took some money and went and bought a truck for $6,000. And I, and when I went to pick it up in Indianapolis, I realized, oh, my God, I don't know how to drive this thing. But I did manage to get it home. And uh, it took me a few weeks, and I bought a flatbed trailer, and I signed it on with a, a carrier that had five other five other trucks. And, and I, I just learned how to truck. No schooling, no nothing. All right. So, so being an owner-operator at that time, what year was this? That was ninety three. Ninety three. What what was what was the mm -hmm. what was the experience of truck driving in nineteen ninety three? Well, you hear everybody talking about the old days of truck driving, and ninety three really wasn't the old days. But the only thing different is is more regulation, and the trailers keep getting bigger. And I mean, that, that, it's not a huge difference. Not it, not if you look at it from a micro standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's just going with the times, changing ELDs, logbooks, you know, different rules. I mean, when I started driving, that we used a whole different logbook format. You know, you could stop your clock and everything back then. Okay, okay. So, being you, you also ran up under your own authority as well, right? How was what was the process of 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 getting your own authority, and what is the difference? Because I now I'm, I'm now I'm going to be a little bit truck illiterate right now because I I know a little bit about leasing, not a fan. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, leasing through uh, a major carrier, I'm not a fan of that. You know, right. a lot of a lot of people jump in. A lot of people jump into it because they get talked into it. Oh, you get more money, and you would do this, and you would do that, but still, but still not taking the responsibility of what they really need to truly understand of leasing the truck from a major carrier. Now, if you guys want to lease a truck, I would suggest that you lease outside of the carrier. I'm that's just me, mm -hmm. um, but. I mean, I, I hear authority and I hear different uh, descriptions of authority being that you actually got your authority. You can you can you clear up some myths on for me personally on authority. The, bit, the biggest myth that I see is people think it takes a lot of money to, to get your own authority and it doesn't. I mean, back when I got mine, you did have to do all the all the work yourself, fill out all the paperwork. And it took it took some time, not a lot of time. Now you can just go to OIDA, and I think it's like three hundred and eighty dollars, and they'll fill out all your paperwork for you, and that's really cheap. Now you do have to have your initial down payment for your insurance, and that's the hard part for people to come up with, you know, eight thousand dollars, something like that. For for you, for you a million, you had to have a million a million dollar policy, right? Yeah, it's a million dollar umbrella policy. Yeah, and you have to carry that in any business, but in the trucking industry, it's uh, it's more expensive, a lot more expensive because of the amount of damage a person can do. Mm -hmm. uh, so you come up with your initial down payment, and then it's just set up on a on a you set it up on you pay it monthly after that, you know, whatever it is depending on your state and, and your address and what it all goes off of. It might be between twelve and $1,800 a month for a, a single truck operation. Okay, okay. Now, uh, only... Now, hauling jet engines is different. My liability insurance now is like $2,300 a month, just just without running my authority because of I have to have a $10 million policy. Okay, okay. Now, uh, now... Your own authority. What what do what do that entails? I mean, what do owning your own authority gives you? Well, in today's world, everyone seems to well, they're, they're, the people today they're younger, right? When I say mm -hmm. younger, I mean younger in the business. Mm -hmm. 
And what they're running is spot market freight. Now, running spot market freight, you freight you run off the dad board or the load, any other kind of load board you so desire that you want to pay pay to get onto. And you call and you book your load. Back then was different. Now you can use your factoring agent to to find out if if you you know if you can haul their freight because it's like you know they're going to pay their bill. Some people don't pay your bill. Back in my day, you didn't have that. You you had to run up on your on your own money. Mm-hmm. That meant you had to wait ninety days for people to pay you. Okay. So you had to have a little money to to go into it. Now you can get into it a lot easier and a lot safer. I've had so many customers go out of business on me, owing me money, and stuff like that. And you can you can't get your money once they're in bankruptcy. You know. Right. It's yeah. I trust me. I know about bankruptcy. Been there a few times. <laughs> chapter seven, right. chapter thirteen, chapter eleven. You name it. I, I've been collecting I've been your there. money is a nightmare. I've been there. I, yeah. I've been there. All right. So only so your authority does that makes you. Uh, I hear, I hear truck drivers use terms like MC, uh, your own D, mm-hmm. your own uh, your own dot number. Does does authority does authority gives you all of that as well? Yeah, you file for an MC number, and used to you had to file for a KYU number, um, and if you're, it depends on what type of goods you're hauling. If you're hauling non-perishable, it's one 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 way, and if it's general freight, it's another. Steel, in a, in a way, but like I said, I, I haven't done that in a while, so a, little, a few things has changed. So, uh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was that was my phone ringing. Um, so oh, so do you so do you still have your own authority? No. When when you stop operating, you file an amendment to to cancel it or suspend it if you're thinking about coming back with it. Okay. 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 So you so I still carry. On suspension, an, an interstate uh, DOT number for for my state, in case I, I it's just like suspended in case I but, but going over the road, I I totally got rid of that. So do you still so do you still run do you still run your twelve trucks, or are you sold them all? No, no, I, I sold them all off a long time ago. Um, I built myself in a in a recession, so when you build yourself in a recession. You, you always kind of think of yourself in a recession. So even when you're making good money, you have a tendency to save. And in, in trucking, saving is the name of the game, it, right? Because exactly. you're gonna ha- you're gonna have lean times, no matter how good it is. A bad time is right around the corner. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of these new jacks need to need to understand that you're not gonna always get that that uh that that prime load or that prime paycheck every week. You got a lot of you got a lot of jacks that comes on YouTube and 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 just tell the I guess the bright and sunny side of of trucking, but then they don't want to turn around and tell you the the ugly side of it either. You know what I'm saying? Because if well, if you look at it in a way, most of the people that are talking on social media have not been an owner operator, or most of them are just lease operators. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I've, I've leased a lot of trucks. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just finding the right lease and the right niche for yourself. But so they haven't they haven't seen hard times, right? And right now we're going into a hard time scenario. And if they was doing spot market freight and getting three or four dollars a mile, they were doing great. But when you come into it during a cream session where everything is butter and roses, then you don't know how to survive in a downturn. Uh, that, that's why so many of them are company drivers now because they you know, are doing local because they just don't know how to survive because they, they spent their money instead of saving it. You know, I did a video about that, about I, I think that you should have – Maybe you can agree with me, but I, I think you should have at least four checking accounts or at least four banking accounts. You need you need one for your personal, you need one for your business, mm-hmm. you need one for your savings, and you need one for the profit. You know what I'm saying? Your personal is where you you need 
You need one for the for the profit. That's where all the money goes into. I think I'm saying that right. I got to go back and read, look at my video. But I know- you are saying that you are saying that very well. Yes, you did. Nope. And 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 you're and you got to have a business account because that you're you're it saves you from a, it, can, it can save you from trouble. I mean, if if something erroneously happens and they, and anyone attaches something to you personally, yeah, that's going to affect your bank account. Even if you didn't do anything wrong, mm-hmm. but you happen to fight an issue, business accounts cannot be attached that way. Only the government can do anything with that. With that, exactly. It's, the bank can't touch those. Exactly, and I like I said before, is 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 how you break it down. Once you break it down, then you can actually see how much you you know you you profiting. And how much you you spending, because trucking gives you that opp- trucking gives you that opportunity to save, but if you're not doing it right, you 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 gonna you gonna mess up. You are gonna mess up, and that's why I keep saying that's why I keep jumping back to these guys that's doing all these leasing, and they they leasing from a company because what the company is telling them is all all great and all like that, but it's 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 really not. Because all that stuff that happens to the truck is coming out of your pocket one way or another, period. And if right. and if something and if something happens to you at that company, you you get fired or you get or in in prime cases, you your contract is terminated. You're gonna have to give that truck up, mm-hmm. and you 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 put all that money into that truck. And you and you can't take it nowhere because you you leased it from a company. Right. There's so many different angles on leasing, and we you it's, it's very hard to explain the different angles because people don't see it. If you lease from Prime and you're paying a thousand dollars a week, and you're putting into a maintenance account, but you leave or they terminate your contract, you're not getting your your maintenance back. If you go and and lease a truck on your own. Then you keep the maintenance account. You're the one that's responsible for everything. Mm-hmm. And, but then there are other ways, other angles, right? Right. Let's say you're in a lease that's three hundred and fifty dollars a week, and and they say uh, they're going to cover all expenses and charge you twelve cents a mile. Actually, that's not an unfair lease, you know, in a way. But then, but if you're in at a, at a company doing a thousand dollars a week plus eight or ten cents a mile maintenance, that's a real bad rap for drivers. But a lot of those YouTubers that, that get pretty big, they're at those companies that are putting you into the worst leases. I agree. But that's all they know. They're not. They're not lying to you. That's just all they know. I agree. I agree one hundred percent. What do you now? You you was a trainer, and you said uh, how how long have you trained? How, how long how long was it when you was training? Uh, I trained at CRST for four or five years until I just got burnt out on it. And then I and then I went uh, and started doing my own thing again. I had to build, you know, a cash reserve up and all that from my back injury because I was, you know, behind a couple of years. Right, right. And be, and you being that you were the only driver, you're you. Uh, that's another thing too. I'm glad you brought that up because you're the driver. You're the owner. <laughs> if anything happens to you, everything pretty much shut down. Right. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. The back office, everything goes down. Um, I'm speaking with a guy on one of my AB5 videos right now, and he and there's a it's a mindset, right? And he's like, you know, California is right for what they're doing because there's no protection for the, 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 the he says employee. He doesn't understand. He thinks that you have to that if you're that every company is making you be a 1099. Mm-hmm. And I'm like. No, it's a choice. You can be a company driver, or you can be a 1099 contractor, or you can be an owner operator. They're all a little bit different. There's just a little bit of difference. But you are responsible for your health. When I broke my back, I got knocked off of my trailer by a uh, oh, excuse me, a D and D company. I forget their name, but they they a big paper mill. They knocked me off my trailer. It was an accident, but I didn't think I was hurt, and I left there. I didn't, you know, call no attorneys or go to the hospital or anything. And um, two days later, I realized that something was seriously wrong. So I ruined my lawsuit against D&D because I didn't file any kind of reports. Okay. Now, 
I carried occupational accidental health insurance. Uh, you know, some states make you carry that. It's the same as disability for an owner operator. Right. But you pay it yourself. The company doesn't pay it. And um, but because I had done my taxes in a certain way over the years, I wasn't going to get but like three hundred bucks a week. Now, if you're if you're like you can very easily write off too much in trucking mm-hmm. and be totally telling, you know, being truthful, but you wrote off so much, you only paid, you know, three or $4,000 in taxes. So everything goes off of what your tax statement is at the end of the year when it comes to insurance. But if you're with a, if you're an, if you're a regular W2 employee, then it doesn't matter like that. You get paid off of what you made at the company. Okay. Okay. So this guy's telling me that, that these guys are employees and that the company should put the bill for their injuries or anything like that. But they were contractors, the ones that are fighting the, you know, for the 85. So it makes it a whole different issue in my opinion. Okay. So how, how, how long was it before you, how long was it before you actually, you know, got back right? How, how long you was out of commission for I was at a commission almost two years. See, that's a and that that, that must have put a big serious dip into your uh, into the finances. At that time, was was you uh, was you and your girlfriend together at the time? And did she come and take up take the mantle up after uh, for you while you was down? No, nah, she was just a little girl back then. I was I was in ninety eight. <laughs> 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 okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. All right, so for the for the uh for the trail trucks that you that you had at that one point, uh did you have all the trucks filled and how was it how was it being how was it being a boss at the time? Back then, cuz I I've, I've actually done this twice. But back then it was not hard. I mean, cuz the guys that you hired knew how to run a truck, you know? I'm from the country and everybody grew up around trucks, you know, just everything. I mean, we we lived and breathed farm industrial life. Nowadays, it's a whole different story. Uh, What what do we have seven or eight trucks when we started selling them Um, a few years ago, about about six years ago. And that was a nightmare. Filling truck seats was a nightmare. (laughs) Getting, getting drivers that were qualified or was not, you know, smoking weed or something, mm-hmm. it w- was just hard as hell. Yeah, I can go out right now and, and get another 10 or 12 trucks in, in 24 hours if I want. I have no problem doing it. And <laughs> Wow. That's what's that? That's that's uh that's but, that's crazy. That's crazy that that how it, how how it is now that you can't find good qualified drivers these days. Yeah, it is. It's really hard. Um, and I, but a lot of times, but back then, I mean, now the, the people coming into the industry, a lot of them don't just don't have any experience with, with out of. Like I've hired a lot of guys out of you know big city people and you know. They, they've never even driven a car, you know, and they've been driving for a year. And Hello? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. I, the dog was wanting to go out. Oh, okay, okay. I was <laughs> like, whoa, you was talking about the car. I'm like, yo, where you go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, do you, do you, do you miss, do you miss it? Uh, Chris, do you do you miss running? Yes. Do you miss running a running a company, being a boss, running that many trucks? Um, I tell you what, what I do miss. I don't miss part of it. I miss I miss being in charge of everything. Totally being in charge of everything. But what I'm doing now is more profitable, way more profitable. Because I'm specialized in a whole jet engine. Um, that's not to say I, I, I probably will put some more trucks on again, but it'll be at least a year or so. And what I'll probably do is my current truck, which is a big truck. I'll get somebody qualified to haul specialized in what I do because I'm not going to ever put on drivers again and have them haul toilet paper or dog food. 
because there's not enough of a profit margin. Mm -hmm. There's just not. Uh, but I, I will probably do it again. But it'll be in the specialized department. Like I said, we we do. Uh, we didn't do as good as I wanted to do this last year. We did like three hundred and fifty-eight thousand. And year the year before that, I did four hundred and sixteen. But I was off a lot more this year. Taking you know just being at home, right? Taking some time off. Yeah, and 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 uh, I mean like last, well, we was off three or four months altogether this last year, maybe more than that. Because I had to, you know, I, where I bought a new truck and it took two months just to get it rolling because of paperwork errors and stuff like that. Okay. So you said. But, you know, a company like this, I can pay somebody more like 200, you know, $180,000, $190,000 a year versus, versus regular freight. Okay, okay. So this so and they have a truck that they have a bathroom in. So now who now who you running now you you running off you running f well you lease on to another company, right? Yes, yes. And, uh I just bought a truck and leased it on here. All right, so you doing uh now you saying you running jet engines, so you a flatbedder. We are, yeah, open deck. We got a step deck. Okay, okay. Flatbed life. All right, because I, I'm, I'm hearing you. You said uh, jet engines, and I'm like, no, nah, you can't be moving this stuff with a box. So you're a flatbedder. So mm -hmm. what's um how, uh, Chris? How how old are you, man? Fifty five in September. <sighs> Congratulations on that, bro. Fifty five, man. <laughs> I'm I'm fifty, and I'm 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 afraid of flatbed. I, I'm I'm afraid of flatbed. Tell me how a 55 year old is doing it, man. Uh, I don't have any problems. I mean, I, I stay active. I think that not staying active is death. You know, you're working your way into death. I was afraid to go back into this venue because that's what I did back in the day was the flatbed. Mm -hmm. And after I broke my back, I was truthfully afraid to go back into it for for many years. And but I thought, you know what? I can try it and I do have some pain and have to get a massage every once in a while and stuff like that. But yeah, I wish I'd come back into it years ago and, and I probably would have, but for eight of the 10 years that me and her have been together, we was running a, a dedicated route and we were still netting $4,800 a week. And I, I couldn't leave that until, you know, until it dried up. Okay. That, that's not bad. That's not a bad check at all. <laughs> no, it was really good. I couldn't leave it, you know, at home every weekend, and I just couldn't leave that industry, although I hated the industry. But I couldn't leave that money. And we do more money now, but we also have a lot more time to relax. That and that and that's that is what's up. Let me see. Somebody just texted me. That is what's up, man. Talk about talk about the pay, the benefits and the miles. Uh, per week that you that you doing with this current company now, or talk a little talk a talk a little bit more about that. Okay, dog was after the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, well, if we have a hard week, we might run forty two hundred miles. You know, we don't need resets. Um, a, a bad a bad month is a twenty thousand dollar to the truck month. Uh, it's like uh, say the last three months of the year every one of those months were, were over $40,000 to the truck after after fuel mm -hmm. but not truck payments right but after fuel and insurance um, oh, and we have a lot of time off like say we'll deliver in Seattle or something we might sit there for a week you know and, and, and what I do then I pull the motorcycles down off the trailer and we go riding motorcycles everywhere. Just that's that, that's our adventure trucking part, right? This is kind of like hobby trucking in a way. Okay. Every once in a while we run hard, and then we we have a good time. That's my other channel, by the way. Tow Bar 1965. We we uh, do motorcycle vlogs. Okay. Okay. And adventure. Okay. That's what's up. Adventure trucking, man. What what's some tips? What's mm -hmm. what's some tips you can give some of these people on how to become successful in trucking? Well, what, what in, in life, what, what, what they tell you, write down your 
write down your goals and stick to them. So in a way, that's what I did back in the day. I said, this is where I want to be. How do I get here? And, and being somewhere is always a matter of money. How do I get to this money? Now, you can lose sight along the way if you don't write down them goals, five-year, 10-year, 15-year goals, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so set your, set your eye on a prize. Find out how to get to that prize and implement it as a plan. Now, this company that I'm with now, I first applied here 25 years ago, mm-hmm. and I didn't have enough experience. You had to have a minimum of five years experience. And at that time, I only had four years. And then I called them later, and they're so selective. When I say selective, they're selective in who they can hire because there's always people wanting to get into it. Because, you, you know, you got to have certain experiences. Like, like, well, what's the qualifications to get on there? Well, you need to, some oversized experience and some flatbed experience. If you want to... If you want to do the double drops, well, you need pole car experience. That's over 14, six high. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just that kind of stuff. And it's the same way. What if you want to get into windmills? You know, how, how do you do that? That, that? that pays big money, too. So, you, you know, you know, you got to set your, your path to that, that company. Like, I'm sending, I'm sending people to Smoky Point Distribution, Smoky Point Distribution mm-hmm. where Daniel McCarthy just started. Okay. Um, because... At the company where you can get all of that open deck experience over a period of a couple of years. And yeah, you may only be getting 50 cents a mile, but you're getting experience. The biggest hurdle for us as, a, as drivers is that we don't expand ourselves. Like many years ago, I wanted to be a bed bugger. Oh. And the only wait, way I could be a bed wait, bugger wait, wait, wait. was to go wait, and work as wait, a bed wait, bugger. Wait, yes. wait, a, a, a bed bugger? Like what the Asian mind does, uh, move, moving household furniture oh, from house to oh, house. Oh, okay. I'm like, a bed bugger? What the hell is a bed bugger? <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, home. But it's an industry that pays really well. Okay. Uh-huh. And the only way they would let me in is if I parked my truck for six months and went and learned how to do it firsthand. Then they would hire me to bed bug. But I never would do that. And But now I tell people... If you're set up right and you got and you can, you can like maybe you're an owner operator hauling dog food and you want to learn how to do something else. Maybe you should step back from owner operating for a year or something and learn on the other side and then come back into it. That's some good. That's some good advice right there, man. That is some good advice. So what, um, what keeps you motivated out here, man? Oh, well, we all get that white line fever in our blood. Mm-hmm. Everybody that quits ends up coming back because it's the most money you're you're ever going to make in your life, probably. And you reach a point in truck driving to where you learn to hate it. It's the worst thing in the world, and you get bitter and upset and sorry. But I woke up one day a long time ago and said, this is the life God gave me. And I'm going to be happy with it. I could have went another way. I've been to school. I, I, I couldn't find the jobs I wanted. My girl got a degree too. She got, she couldn't find the work that she wanted. You know, higher education is great, but everyone cannot be in a position to make the, the money they want getting higher education. It's just a, a waylay in time that you may or may not fulfill a dream that's not even a dream. It's just you think you should have this higher education. And being a truck driver has afforded me so much time to get a higher education on my own. I mean, you get so many life experiences out here and learn to solve problems. And, you know, it's, it's a lot like, well, I don't know how to compare it to anything else. <laughs> but it's, uh, I, 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 I'm a trucker for life. That's what we are. What we, we love our yeah, life. That's what we are. We can't, we, we can't see it no other way. I mean, I like I said, I I, I already started my plan. I, I should have started it. I should have started this plan five years ago when I got into it. But, you know, of course, you know, I'm messing around still trying to get my feet wet. But I think uh, I think I'm I'm think I'm knee deep in water now. So I'm knee deep in this trucking water. So now it's time for me to put 
a, a plan together to make sure that that my life goes, you know, goes the way that I want it to go, man. So it, this this was great, great, right. great conversation with you, man. I did, just just listening to you, I learned a lot. I mean, you know, everything from step decking, everything from uh, your authority and all like that, man. It, it, this this was a great conversation, man. I really do appreciate you coming on and uh, chopping it up with me on this, man. What uh, what are some of your greatest achievements in trucking, and how has it shaped you? I don't, I don't know. I don't think of anything that I've ever done as a great achievement. Uh, I just try to spread happiness throughout the world <laughs> in a way, you know, we, we have a if we, if, if you let yourself think about trucking, it's a miserable life, but you know, we don't smile at each other. We are more inclined to cuss each other. So I, I don't see anything I've ever done as an achievement. I, I mean, that's how I've carried my my whole life before trucking is to try to to uh, just be good to one another, you know. Uh, money, money's an achievement, and I, I, I like money, you know. You, you, you give me, you know, after 29 years, if you, if, I, I've been successful at it. I've always been successful at it. But I guess that's the best is, if I did file bankruptcy, yes, I broke my back, but I filed bankruptcy on six thousand dollars. You know, right. I mean, it was, I, I, it was nothing, but I, I, that's why the debt that I owed, and that, that was the trucking debt. The rest was personal debt, and I paid that off. Uh, so what about no? What, what about the end? What how how do you feel about the industry today? I mean, what, what's your likes and dislikes about the about about the industry today? What what's what's the best thing about trucking, and then what's and then what's your worst thing about trucking? The worst thing about trucking, in my opinion, is that the AMA and and all of that that those those agencies are trying to regulate it to what they will call an even playing field, but what they are doing is they're holding down the achievers to the same level as the underachievers you know like like with the logbook mm -hmm. right i mean if, if you can't sleep and you have to stop your truck and go to bed but but you but you now you can't go to sleep because because you're like an, an overachiever or have an active magic you know you, you know you, a lot of people has more energy than a 10-hour day or 11-hour right. day and so they're stuck they're stuck trying to go to sleep and then they got to get up and drive tired so that, that's the, the ELD is one of my big problems, but that might be changing soon. We're going to fix it to where we can stop our clock. I hear it. And that's, that's going to be a good that's, thing. That is going to be a good thing. Uh, All right. So that was the, so that's your, that's, that's, your, I, I that's your feelings on the worst. So what, what's, what's the best? There's not a lot of good out here. I mean, it's not bad in, in my personal life. It's, it's, it's all the best. I mean, what I'm doing is the best. I'm living, I love living it. your you best know, I life. I love being able to have. Yes, I mean, I you know having her with me and us working together, we love it. it right? Yeah, uh, adventure trucking is wonderful. I wish to God every truck driver could have a motorcycle or a bicycle or an e-bike or something just to get away from their truck, because just leaving your truck for four or five hours. And it makes a whole difference in your attitude. You know, just that's just it's that simple. We got off our truck over at Devil's Tire. We rode down; it was an hour away. We rode around the mountain. We got chased by rattlesnakes and prairie dogs. And and coming back, I felt like we had been gone for three days. You know, after we got back on the truck and resumed our, our run. That was a beautiful. That that, so that, that is was, the that best. was a beautiful time for you down there, huh? Yes, How it is it possible that you can get chased by a rattlesnake, bro? The motherfuckers, they, they, they don't look like they oh. crawl fast, man. <laughs> well, she, she, she's got that video on Princess Prissy Pants' channel. It was so funny. There was this rattlesnake in the road, and I was afraid it was going to get run over, so I was going to move it. You know, we're guys. We mess with things we should not mess right. with. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it didn't want me helping it. It thought it was going to, you know, it was pretty mean, so it... 
it decided to attack my tire on my motorcycle and bit my tire. And I thought, well, I guess I'm, I guess he can take care of himself, you know? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, Chris, man. Hey, before I get out of here, man, uh, 29 years, you say 29 years of trucking, man. So what, what are all the companies you drove for in the past? Well, most of that time I was driving for my own company, you know, as, as uh, you know, uh, with my own authority. But after I broke my back, I drove for CRST for about four and a half years. Um, I paid, I paid for that. True. When I left there, I had three trucks there running under their numbers mm-hmm. and, um, uh, they were all paid for, but I went over to Earl Henderson because I had a, a chance at a, a run over there the one that ended up, I stayed, I stayed there for eight years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I leased the truck. I paid it off in, in a year and a half and ran that, that auto parts run that paid me all that money. Um, when they got bought out by Prime, Prime started cutting up my route. And it really hurt my feelings because I was in charge of everything on, on that route, right? There was other trucks, and I, I, I just, that I more or less dispatched them every day. You know, I, I set up the runs and everything from my truck and so anyway when prime took it over they destroyed it and and so uh you, I, 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 that's when i lost i, I take you you're not a fan of prime no i hate them <laughs> but that's when i lost sight of my goals because i had been doing that big run for so mm-hmm. long and i was like oh crap what am i gonna do so i had an offer from the well company to do a mushroom run that was going to pay me almost as much every week, but they lost the contract two or three months in. And then for another two months, I stayed there and and I was like, what am I doing? I mean, why don't I just go buy a truck and and go back to running government freight under my numbers? And I was on my way to buy a truck when um, uh, I seen an advertisement for Creek. And I was like, well, actually this truck is the same truck and it's, like eight thousand dollars cheaper, so I went and bought a truck from them, mm-hmm. and uh, they don't do leases; they you, you purchase their truck. And so I purchased their truck, and I was there for seven months. Well, I paid the truck off, and then I, then I took the truck because I'd already called these guys, and all I needed was a truck paid for. And I was like, "Okay, baby, we can either go back to running our numbers and run government freight, because uh, when you're ex-military, you get uh, priority now, mm-hmm. hauling through Scott Air Force Base." And you have direct pay and everything, which is a wonderful thing for a veteran. I mean, it's just wonderful. I would tell anyone, if you have left the military and you want to run your own numbers, get your numbers, keep your numbers for a year, and then get on Scott Air Force Base and haul government freight. It pays really good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so I, but we decided to go with this company. And that's who we went with. All right, that is what's up, man. Well, hey, yo, where where can uh where can my listeners find get connected with you, man? What, what's your what's your social media outlets? I got your I got your uh, YouTube uh, channel up right now. Yeah, I've got the tow bar. And I, I mean, the trucking review channel. Right uh, she has Princess Prissy Pants oh, channel. Hold on right quick, you say you hold on right quick. Uh. Princess, what's that? P R N S E E, Prissy, Prissy spelled Prissy P R. <laughs> yes, Prissy, Prissy, Prissy. Pants. Hold on, right quick. I'm gonna have to go to. I'm gonna have to go to Google. Princess, Prissy pants. Hold, hold on, right quick. It says try again. Princess, Pri- oh, Okay, I guess it's not listening. Oh well, there we go. <laughs> hold on right quick hold on hold on let me let me bring let me bring my face back in here hold on princess prissy pants right that okay yep. so prin- princess Correct. let me go to youtube and type that in princess prissy pants oh there she is okay okay so this is uh this is your this is your wife's channel. My my uh my yes. YouTube is is slow as always. There it is. 
Princess Prissy Pants, the motorcycle videos. Okay. This is where you guys Yes, that's this, her. Is, this is where you guys do all your uh motorcycle adventures. Then of course you got the uh trucking mm-hmm. review channel. That's where everybody know you from. And uh, do you have a do you have yeah. an Instagram? Yeah. Trucking review channel on Instagram. Yep. Uh there you are. Facebook uh super truckers of america united on facebook okay uh then tiktok is trucking review channel or tow bar 1965 either one of them will get you there uh then i got the tow bar 1965 moto blog channel which is actually my first uh trucking channel that i stopped using but now i'm using it again and i just put music over there that might interest truck drivers to, 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 to driving footage outlaw music is this is this it right here i'm yep. playing yeah yes that's it uh, okay okay All right. Well, that's what's up, man. That is that is what's up. Oh, damn. I yeah. think there was something wrong. Hold on right quick. I had to turn off one of my... There we go. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, two cameras running over here. I had to turn off one of them. All right, man. Well, hey, thank you very <laughs> much for uh, for showing up on my channel, man. I really do appreciate it. If you guys want to know more about my man Chris and his my man Chris and his wife definitely go over there to the Princess Princey Pants channel on YouTube as well as the Trucking Review channel on YouTube. Why did you name your Why did you name your YouTube channel Trucking Review Channel? Um, when I when I, when I started the second, I was just going to be reviewing trucks, doing tours and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And maybe products, and like like every YouTube channel, trucking YouTube channel, it evolves, right? I realize that products are fine, and they're always going to give you free products. But I really enjoyed kind of you know talking with her. You know, it's our it's our daily. We just talk, you know. And I thought, well, it's kind of we're kind of funny. You're funny. You make me laugh. So I started recording it. And I really enjoy making music videos to trucking. I know it's kind of, it's just my thing. I enjoy making a music video and trying to, you know, it's not my music and I can't monetize it or anything, but I still enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I might have so, to, I, YouTube, I might have to go back. Or any yeah, social, I might have to go back and uh, mute that, uh, that, uh, that little bit that I play because YouTube is funny yeah. like that. So. Yeah, I, I, I can let, I, know, I think that song is one that would get you unmonetized um for sure i think it is because that is a sons of anarchy song <laughs> yeah, i might have to yeah i might have to go but, ahead and uh, mute that in post and put probably put another probably put a youtube song up in 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 the midst of it but yeah oh uh, yeah but i enjoy that and so youtube is going to be for me i mean we did i think like 1400 bucks last month or like for over christmas every month on average from YouTube but after the Christmas month I don't care if I make a dime after that exactly. right exactly so I use any kind of music I want after that so it's fun it's just fun to do well that's what's up man at least I'm I'm glad you one of these YouTubers that's not about the drama man so I really do I definitely do appreciate that because there's there's way too many YouTubers out here that's in this trucking field that's 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 drama that's dramafied and and this trucking space is real real small and i say this once and i'll say it again it's not going to be that youtuber that's going to run up on you it's going to be that youtuber's fan that's going to run up on you yeah so it's yeah that's right because you do get some fans like that you got to worry mm-hmm. about and i was imparting that to a drama guy the other day he took it as a threat but it wasn't a threat it was just good sense you have to watch out what you say and because do. everybody is searchable on social mm-hmm. media. 
and and some people are nuts out and there. And like I and like I said before, man, it's not it's 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 not going to be that YouTuber that's going to run up on you. He, he could probably talk shit, say whatever you want because it's it's the platform. It get it's the platform, and you going to say, yeah, I'm going to run up on you and yada yada yada. I hate this person, this that and the third. Yeah, okay, that fan. That 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 <laughs> subscriber, that diehard fan, is the one that's gonna go and do what the YouTuber might want to do. So I really don't think none of us in this in this in this field is gonna do is gonna do anything. We we I just think talk. I think people should think this way. I'm actually that guy that would run up on you <laughs> if you attack me. Right? I am that guy. I don't have no boundaries. You know, I'll burn your. You know, I'll, you know, I'm saying I'll, I'll go crazy on somebody if they attack me because I consider it as a personal thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to like me and you are doing a collaboration at the mm -hmm. moment. That's the way to do a collaboration. That, that, you know, Be and friendly. that's how to do it. That's how to do it. So, but yeah, let me get on up out of here, brother man. I got my load. Hold on, right quick. Yes, I did. I did get my load. I got my load from my fleet manager. He says, yo, you ready? I'm like, yeah, let me finish up this uh, phone call and uh, get on up out of here. Chris, man, thank you very much. Much success to you, man. One love. And definitely, definitely don't be no stranger, bro. If you want to come on and, uh, and, and uh, do some more collaborations, man, my phone is open. If you want to talk about anything, let me know. And if you guys... That's what's up, you guys. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with your boy, you can get at me at Lockout Men, Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. See, I almost had a brain fart. Lockout Men Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up in the messenger if you can find my government, which will probably be easy now. Or you can hit me up in the DM over at Instagram, uh, Lockout Men. If you guys want to link up with uh, Chris and the Trucking Review channel, definitely go over to his channel, uh, the Trucking Review. And if you want to hook up with both of him and his wife, it is Princess Prissy Pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to subscribe to that channel. I I, I like it just because, of, just because of the name. But uh, anyway, thank you for joining me, Chris, man. I really do appreciate it. You guys stay safe, and you guys have a blessed one out there, man. Thank you for having us on. I'll talk I to you later. I appreciate it, man. You take it easy. Peace. Bye-bye.